Hi, I'm Mr. Boone, and today I'm going to go through an overview of our co-op program at Del Castle High School. For starters, you may be wondering what is co-op. In a nutshell, co-op is the opportunity for you to sign out of school daily and go to a paid employment opportunity where you're also earning vocational credits. So essentially, we're going to give you credit for your CTE or SHOP program while you go out and earn paid employment opportunities. It's important to know that co-op is a privilege though. It's not a right that you have as a student here. It's a privilege that is earned with a few different requirements uh, through eligibility. And once you've earned the privilege to participate, you then need to maintain that eligibility. So how does it work? We have a few different scheduling options. Okay, and we'll see them pop up right here. Our half day co-op, which is our most traditional co-op opportunity. And then we also have what we refer to as two week about. Almost all of our students in our building are half day co-op students. Really the only students that are on this two week about schedule are those that fall in our construction trades. So if you're in carpentry, plumbing, welding, sheet metal, electrical, um, sometimes in some of our uh, automotive uh, career areas such as auto tech, auto body, aviation, those students will also sometimes be on a two week about, but if you don't fall down a wing um, for your career area class time, then you are most likely a half day co-op student. It's important to remember that. Under that half day schedule, students will report to school every day. You'll receive your academic classes in the morning. You are typically done around 1117 or 1205. That's after either block four or block five and then you can sign out at that time and go to work. The important thing to remember is that you cannot miss academic time for co-op. So if you have a fifth period academic class, then you are expected to be in that fifth period academic class. If your academics end after block four, then that is the time you're able to, to sign out. Um, we base our co-op program off of 20 hours per week is what we're looking for our half day students to work. So uh, let's use, for example, someone that is maybe a nurse tech, and they don't report to work until 4 p.m., and they're getting their 20 hours per week. They're working evening hours. They may also work weekend hours. Those all count towards their co-op time. Okay, Your co-op hours do not have to be specifically during the school day. So as long as you're getting a minimum of 20 hours per week, then every day you are permitted to sign out of school and leave uh, during your career area time. For our two week about schedule, this is a little bit different because this schedule is year long. In all of your classes so far, you've had uh, a class that ran for uh, the first and second marking period. And then around the end of January, we change uh, semesters and you start a new schedule of classes. During your senior year, again, if you're on this two week about co-op schedule, it's going to be a little bit different. The classes that you participate in, which are typically ELA, Spanish 2, Senior Math, and your career area, those classes are going to be year long. So you will not change at the start of the second semester. Why that's important is if you fall behind in those classes academically and you get onto a pathway where it's going to be difficult for you to pass that class at the end of the year, there is no room to make it up. So if we have to move you off of a two week about schedule due to academics and academics only is the only way we would remove you from a two week about schedule that would happen at the start of the second semester and you would have to restart all of your classes all over again for the second half of the year. So it is very important for those of you again down a wing in construction trades or automotive trades that may be on a two week about schedule. It's important that you stay on top of your academics. Do not fall behind there. Uh, it could make for a, a tougher second half of your senior year if that were to happen. Um, but two week about is a great schedule because it allows you more availability to go out and work. So the way our two week about schedule works is student will report to work for two weeks full time with no academic requirements. During the two weeks that you are at work, you are not required to do any schoolwork. There is no new learning happening. Your entire class is all out to work. So um, 
You won't, don't have to worry about any academics during that time uh, for that two week period. Then you'll return back into school and you'll fall into your academic schedule where again, you would most likely have ELA, Spanish two, senior math in the morning and then your career area in the afternoon. You'd follow that schedule for a two week period of time. Then you rotate back out to work full time for two weeks, back into school for two weeks. And that rotation continues all school year long. Okay. Again, the most important thing to remember there, though, is you have to stay on top of your academics. It's also important when you're on a two week about schedule that you still monitor Schoology for different messages that may come through. We may still reach out and try to contact you uh, while you're at work to remind you of upcoming due dates, such as evaluations for co op, or uh, maybe if you're behind in schoolwork, we may try to contact you to get you back on track. So you will still need to monitor Schoology. The last schedule that I, I put in here is a combination of these two. So you would really be on a two week about schedule. You would be considered a two week about student. But remember, if you recall, I, I mentioned that you would typically have ELA, Spanish two and senior math in the morning. And then you would have your career area classroom time in the afternoon. You are still eligible to work in the afternoons um, if your employer wants you to come in during the two weeks that you're in school as well. So uh, I list that as a third option here, but it, it really still falls under the two-week about schedule. So half day is the majority of our students. Two-week about is primarily just for construction trades and anyone uh, in our automotive programs. All right, so let's find out if you're eligible. There's a few things that you need to do. The first is you need to have a cumulative GPA of 2.0. What that means is every class you've taken since you've become a student here at Del Castle, if you average all of those grades out, you need to have a 2.0 GPA. You have to be on track with your graduation requirements. If you have failed a class and you need to do credit recovery during your senior year, that could jeopardize your eligibility for co-op. Um, if you're failing a class that's required for graduation, that will jeopardize your opportunity to co-op. You must have good attendance. Look, if you can't attend school, then I'm gonna assume that you also won't attend work either. And we're not willing to send you out into the workforce um, knowing that it's gonna be spotty attendance. We're not sure if you're gonna be there or not. It's not a good representation of Del Castle, our programs, or certainly of, of you, one of our students. So you must have good attendance. All right, discipline certainly cannot play a factor. If you're someone that's constantly rotating through detention or through the student advisor's office, then again, we just don't feel like you're gonna represent us the way we expect you to. You have to have a good rapport with your shop teacher. So if, if you're one of these people that's always against the grain or you're not motivated in your career area or you're forgetting your clothes every day or your work boots or you're not getting your assignments turned in in your, in your career area classes, and your shop teacher doesn't feel like you're prepared to go out to work, or if your shop teacher feels like you may not represent their career area the way that they expect you to out with our business partners in industry, then the shop teacher may not recommend you for co-op. Every year, we have students that are not recommended for co-op. So please make sure that you're putting your best foot forward at all times, not only in your academics, but in your career area because your shop teacher has the ultimate say over whether you go out to co-op or not. You have to have transportation, okay? And this is one of our biggest hurdles for co-op. Um, the students will come to me and say, Mr. Boone, I'm ready to co-op. What do I need to do? And I'll say, great, you have your own transportation? Well, no, I'm not sure how I'm gonna get to work. Then I can't help you, okay? Um, you have to have this figured out. And this should be one of the first things that you address when you start to consider co-op. Uh, the best opportunity is that you have your own transportation. So you have your own vehicle, you have driver's license, and you drive yourself to and from work. Okay. The next option, if, if you have a family member at home that every day has committed to be able to come pick you up from school, drive you to work, and then come back and pick you up at the end of the day, that would also be an option, but I don't recommend it. My fear here is there's going to be some point along the way where your mom or dad or grandma or sister or brother, whoever it is you're relying on for a ride, it's going to be some day where they're sick 
where their car isn't working, where they have a, a doctor's appointment or a dentist appointment, or they just plain old forgot that you needed to go to work that day. Um, so you're now relying on them and their schedule uh, to be able to, to be available to take you to work. And it, it's just usually not a great situation. It can be a short term, a temporary solution, but long term, it's one that typically does not work out so well. We need to secure a job, okay? And, and this is, we'll talk about this in just a moment, but this is sort of a team effort, okay? This is not Mr. Boone's responsibility to go out and just find you a job and hand it out as if it's Halloween candy, okay? It's your job. You're the one who needs to show the motivation and the initiative to go out and find the job, okay? You need to speak to your career area teacher first. Ask them for what type of opportunities you might be best suited for. If they know of any employers that might be willing to bring you on board and then you need to pursue that opportunity you need to contact the employer uh, ask if they're hiring schedule an interview and go through the interview process this is all part of finding and securing your own employment which is exactly what you'll be expected to do when you leave del castle um, so you have a major role in this okay and then the last thing is you need to maintain these standards while you're out working. So I mentioned earlier that co-op is a privilege, it's not a right, and that you need to earn the privilege to be able to go out and participate in co-op. And once you have earned that, you also need to maintain it. And that's where that fits in. So how do you get into the co-op program? Okay, juniors are eligible at the start of the second semester. Um, so typically around the end of January, early February. Now that's gonna depend upon career area, because again, you can only work during your career area time. So if you have electrical trades during block three, four as a junior, it's going to be very difficult to find you a job where you can leave school only during block three, four work, and then come back to school for your academics, which you have later in the day. So that's a situation where you're probably not going to be able to work until the end of your junior year. Okay. In a scenario similar as that. However, we have some other areas. I'll use dental assisting as an example. Our dental assisting students have their dental assisting class during blocks six, seven, and eight. So those students would certainly be able to sign out of school during block six, work the remainder of the school day, and even work into some evening hours. So there are some opportunities there. Some of our career areas, such as nurse tech, culinary arts, uh, may have some evening and weekend availability as well. And um, you could certainly use those types of jobs for co-op as well. So juniors are typically eligible at the end of the second semester. The first thing you need to do when you're ready to begin co-op is speak to your shop teacher and ask them if they would recommend you, um, what type of opportunities you may be best suited for with your skill set, and have them start to point you in the right direction. Uh, you need to make sure that you're eligible through GPA. So if you're not sure about that, you can check with your school counselor. You can also stop in and see me. Again, you need a minimum GPA of a 2.0. Once you've spoken to your shop teacher, uh, you've decided that you are eligible and you're ready to pursue co-op, uh, you need to find a job. And I just mentioned a moment ago that you have a major role in that. So um, it, it's sort of a team effort. It starts with you and your shop teacher as they're the industry expert and have all of the industry contacts needed to be able to place you out uh, into the workforce. And then I am the liaison that, that helps through the process. I monitor um, your paperwork. I help you uh, through the application process, the interview process, securing employment, getting you approved to go out to work, and then following up on, on how you're doing through the co-op program along the way but it really needs to start with you and your shop teacher. Okay, once we've found a job and you've been offered uh, employment, you need to make sure that you get your paperwork completed. So you'll come to my office. I have a blue folder that has all the co-op paperwork in it. You'll take that and get it completed and return to me. You cannot begin working until the paperwork is turned in, okay? It's only two forms. I'll cover those in just a moment. Your co-op training agreement, and the second form is a Delaware work permit. You only need to get the work permit completed if you're under the age of 18. So if you're 18 or older, you only have one document to complete, and that is our co-op training agreement. But it's very important that you understand that you cannot sign out of school for co-op, you cannot leave school for work, you cannot miss any classes, academic or career area, 
until we have your completed co-op paperwork on file. There's a very good chance that you'll be offered a job and your employer will say, I want you to go ahead and start tomorrow. And your reply to that should be, I'm happy to start as soon as possible. However, I have to get this paperwork completed and turned in at school before I'm eligible to begin. I brought my paperwork with me today. Can you go ahead and fill it out? And I will turn it in tomorrow and get the approval. And that's how you should handle that situation. This is the paperwork that I'm referring to. Okay, on the left-hand side, you see our co-op training agreement. Again, you'll come to my office and I have a blue folder sitting right inside my office on a desk. You pick up that blue folder and you'll see this paperwork inside of there. So the co-op training agreement on the first page is completed by the student, by you, all right? So students complete the top section of the front page completely. Where it asks for career program, that is asking which shop area you're in. Plumbing, medical assisting, nurse tech, business tech, whatever career program you're in. If you're not sure of your program start date, you can leave that blank. That's basically asking what is your first day of work. On the second page, you're going to see the top section is for the employer. It's important that your employer completes all sections of this and they sign in that section as well. There is a signature line right below there. Down at the bottom on page two, we need a parent guardian signature. You need to sign it. You need to take it to your career and technical instructor. That is your shop teacher. You need to have them sign it on the third line, and then it will come to me as the last person to sign for final approval. Again, if you're under the age of 18, we also need a Delaware work permit completed. You see that on the right side of this page. The employer will fill out the top section. You are the minor. You will fill out the middle section, and I'm the last person to sign it. I cannot sign your work permit unless you have completed your section and the employer has completed their section. It will come to me for final approval. So what does it take to be successful in co-op once you're out there working? You've covered a lot of these things through your career area. Um, and we refer to them here at Del Castle as employability skills. So things like being prepared for work, okay? Not just showing up on time if your shift starts at four o'clock, but making sure that you're early for your shift, 10 to 15 minutes early. Making sure that you're interested and motivated in what you're doing while you're there, okay? That, that's a key part. Um, try to impress the people that are there, okay? Put your best foot forward. Um, learn about initiative and show it. Initiative means doing something without being told to do it, okay? Something as simple as you see the trash can is full and the trash needs to go out. You tie the trash up, trash bag up, you take it out and throw it away and you put a new trash bag in there. These are things that you've learned all throughout your lifetime to do. Don't be lazy. Don't turn a blind eye to things. If you know something needs to happen, just make it happen. Having a stellar work ethic, okay? That is what our expectation is. Ask questions while you're there. You are in a training program. That's what co-op is. You're there to learn, but you're also there to make a significant contribution to the employer. All right. So um, you need to be making a positive impact there. And lastly, I shouldn't even have to mention this, but I'm going to. Don't try to take advantage of this of the system. You will get caught. OK, if you quit your job, if you get fired from your job, if you get laid off and you continue to sign out for co-op or not come to school and pretend as though you're still on co-op or tell me later on that the whole time you were signing out is because you were going to apply for jobs and going to job interviews. That is not what the co-op program is. When you sign out of work, it is because you are employed in the co-op program for the employer that we have paperwork on file for. If that ever changes at any time for any reason whatsoever, you are immediately no longer eligible for co-op until you notify me and we can find you a new job. If you have um, interviews, you need to complete job applications, I can help you with those things. We can find time to be able to do those things, but I need to know about that, okay? Do not take advantage of the system. You absolutely will get caught and there, there will be consequences for it. On the right-hand side of the screen, you see that I have communication is the key. Communication is the key to success in the co-op program. Please don't forget that. Communication is the key to success in the co-op program. You need to communicate everything with your employer, your career area teacher, and with me. 
Those are the three people that always need to know what is going on in terms of co-op with you and your situation. Communication is the key. Okay, I'm going to put this up here and, and, and I'm just going to summarize. When we send you out to co-op, we expect you to represent Del Castle. And you know exactly what that means. You've been taught what it means to represent us and what our expectations are every day in your academic classrooms, in our hallways here, through our student code of conduct, in your career area classes, through your technical training, through everything you've done here at Del Castle. It has all been a lesson in how you should conduct yourself when you leave Del Castle and enter the workforce and what we expect of you. Del Castle has been doing what we do for over 50 years. There are many, many students that have come before you and many that will come after you. Our reputation through Newcastle County and all of Delaware is an extremely strong one, especially so with our business partners and employers. They know how high we've set the bar and we expect you to also uphold those standards. To be successful and participate in co-op, please make sure that your paperwork is completed before you begin working. You must attend all of your academic classes, check Schoology regularly for messages and postings from myself or your teachers, and make sure you respond to those messages. If you're sent a, a private message in Schoology that pertains directly to you, at least respond saying, I received the message, or I got it, or I'm on top of it, or thank you, or I don't understand, or can you give me more? Please respond to them to confirm that you've read it. Make sure you turn in your evaluations on time. We'll cover evaluations in just a moment. Communicate everything with your employer, all right? So there's gonna be a time where you're sick or you need to call out for whatever reason that may be. If it is an unexpected absence, you're to call your employer immediately, okay? Do that as soon as possible. Do not wait so they have as much advance notice as possible. If you know that next week, a week from now or two weeks from now, you may need to miss work, work for an athletic event, for a school function, for whatever is going on, please request off from your employer in advance. Don't wait until that day to call out. It's not a good look when you call out. But if you handle it appropriately ahead of time and you request off and get that prior approval, it is a much smoother process and it reflects better on you in the long run. Communicate any concerns that you may have with myself and your shop teacher. Okay, you need to keep both of us in the loop at all times. Things you should do that you should not do. Do not begin working without getting approval from myself and turning in your paperwork. Do not leave school before your academic classes are completed. Do not hang around school on a day that you have off before you sign out. When your academic classes end, if you're leaving school for co-op, you need to leave immediately. Don't hang out in the lobby. Don't walk the hallways. Don't be in an unauthorized area. The expectation is that as soon as your academic classes are over, you sign out of school and you leave. Um, do not leave school and not go to work if you're scheduled for work, okay? So uh, we've had situations in the past where a student will call out of work for whatever reason, but will still sign out of school for co-op. That is skipping school, okay? That will result automatically in three detentions because you have your career area class for three class periods. So please do not do that. Again, you will be caught. I do follow up on days that you miss work, and then I check your attendance and see how it's coded, if it's an unexcused absence or co-op. So please do not try to work the system in that manner. You will be caught. Um, do not call out of work unless you notify Mr. Boone and your shop teacher. There are going to be times where you have to call out. You're sick. There's a family emergency. Your car broke down. You just can't get there. You know, these things happen unexpectedly. And it's unfortunate, but it happens to adults as well. Just follow the process. Contact your supervisor immediately and let them know why you can't come into work. And be honest with them. You then need to contact myself and your shop teacher to let us know why you were not at work that day. And as long as you follow that pathway and it doesn't become a pattern that this happens frequently, we will not give you a hard time about it. It's something that can definitely be, uh, be worked around. And lastly, I've mentioned this a few times, do not try to work the system or play the system. You will be called, okay? All right, I mentioned those evaluations a little bit earlier. Uh, your evaluation is how we give you a grade in your career area class for co-op. So when you leave here, you go out and work and you're being paid for work. 
uh, you're being evaluated by your employer. There are four times throughout the school year that we collect an evaluation on you. And it happens to be the end of each marking period. All of your evaluation due dates are always listed in Schoology. So if you go to Schoology, courses, and you go to the class of whatever year you graduate, co-op course in Schoology, on the right-hand side, you will see all of the evaluation due dates. It's important that you know if you're a half-day co-op student or a two-week about co-op student uh, because there are different due dates for each group. So again, the majority of our co-op students are going to be half day. However, if you fall in a wing that is construction or um, automotive services, you could be on a two week about schedule. So you're going to look up your due date based on your respective group and make sure you get this evaluation completed and returned to me before the due date. The best way you can handle this is at the start of the school year, Go into Schoology, take a look at all of these due dates. Go into your cell phone and create a reminder one week before the due date. When you get that reminder on your phone, it will remind you, oh, in one week, my evaluation is going to be due. At that time, go pick up an evaluation form, take it to your employer, get it completed, return it to my office. You do not need to turn the evaluation form in on the due date. It just needs to be turned in before the due date. If you turn it in afterwards, you risk receiving a failing grade or a points deduction on your evaluation. You've worked hard for this grade. I don't wanna see you lose points on it, but it is the only way that we are able to give you a grade in your career area for the work that you're doing with co-op. We must have this form and it's your responsibility to get it turned in. So you're gonna fill out the top section. You can see right here in the yellow circle, the student is going to put their name, you're going to put the company that you work for, your hourly rate, and where it says career area, you're going to write plumbing, electrical, medical assisting, nurse tech, chem lab, whatever career area you're in is what you're going to write in right there. You then present this form to your supervisor. You're going to say to them, this is how I get a grade for the work that I'm doing while I'm here. Would you mind taking a few minutes and filling this out and signing it so I can return it to school? Do not take it to your supervisor and expect them that they're going to fill it out right there on the spot that moment. This is why it's important that you set that reminder for a week in advance. If you go to them and say, I got to turn this in today, I need it right now, you're not being fair to them. They're busy and you need to give them time to get around to it. Maybe they will fill it out on the spot, but that should not be the expectation. So present it to them well in advance of your due date. Your supervisor is going to complete the section in red. They're going to list any dates that you were absent or late to work. They're going to write in some comments down here. They will sign the form and date it. It is your responsibility to return this form to me. We also have an electronic version of this form. It's perfectly fine if you send the electronic version to your employer. However, it is your responsibility to follow up with them to make sure that they have completed it and submitted it. Okay. It's important that you realize that this is your responsibility. Mr. Boone is not going to follow up with your employer and track your employer down to get your grade. Okay. It is your responsibility to do that. All right. Some questions that I'm frequently asked here. What kind of job can I use for co-op? The easy answer is that your co-op job must be related to your career area. Okay. So if you are in auto tech, we want you to go out as a lube tech, okay? You're doing oil changes, you're changing tires, um, you're doing tire rotations. Um, you may be doing some general tune-up type of things, changing filters, um, topping all fluids. So that would be a job related to auto tech. Um, in auto body, you could be doing body work, paint, repair, detailing. Um, maybe you work in a service department or a service desk at a um, dealership. Okay, these would all be related to your career area. There are a few exceptions in there. If you're a student that has an IEP, if you are participating in dual enrollment, or if you've applied for a hardship through your school counselor's office, you may be able to work in some other areas, but these all are gonna require approval. Our number one priority is to place you in a career, in a co-op opportunity that is related to your uh, career area that you're studying. 
How are you graded? I just covered that through the evaluation process. Okay, four times per year. Again, save those due dates as reminders in your phone about a week in advance. And um, it's your responsibility to pick up the evaluation form, get it completed, and return to my office. All right, this is an interesting one. It does come up from time to time. Can I quit my job if I don't like it? Okay, and I'm going to slide my picture out of the way here. And the short answer there is yes. Okay, we want to support, we want this to be a positive experience for you, and we want to support whatever's in the best interest for you. All right, we cannot get into a situation where we're bouncing from one job to the next constantly. Okay, we need to see some longevity there where we get in and we work through some different trials and tribulations. That's part of entering the workforce. But we do want to find something that is a good fit for you, something that you enjoy, that you look forward to going to, and that you're, you're gaining knowledge, experience out of. Um, so if for some reason the job that you're working at currently for co-op just isn't a good fit for you, there's a process to follow. Number one, you're going to notify your career area teacher, your shop teacher. Number two, you're going to notify me. The three of us will talk about it. And if we find that it's in your best interest to find a new job for you, you continue working your current job until we find a new one for you. Once we find that replacement, you then need to offer two weeks notice to your current job, continue to work all scheduled shifts during that two week period. And after that two week period, we'll allow you to leave there and start your new job. We need to make sure that we handle a resignation, a job change situation appropriately. And this is how you would handle it in the real world outside of co-op. Okay. It leave it allows your employer enough time to find a replacement for you. Um, and you're able to leave on good terms so that you don't burn a bridge. You're always have the opportunity to return there in the future should you ever need to. So that's how we want to handle that situation. Okay. I want to work, but I don't have transportation. Are there any resources available? And I touched on transportation earlier. The absolute best mode of transportation is for you to have your own car or truck or vehicle to drive from point A to point B. Um, the second option would be that you have a family member that's going to come to school every day and pick you up. What is not an option is we're not going to allow you to leave school with another co-op student and have them drop you off at their job or at your job on their way to work, uh, it creates too many different moving moving parts and, and too much liability in there. Another option is public transportation. Okay. And if, if you've never used the DART transit system before, it's it's a great option. Okay. It's very inexpensive. You have no insurance to pay for, no car payment. There's no maintenance to uphold. It only costs two dollars a day to go ahead and ride the DART transit system. You can also buy some discounted um, student passes, which is a month long pass um, at a very discounted rate. There is a DART bus stop right out the back of the school. There's actually two of them out the back of the school. Uh, DART Transit has a great app for your smartphone where you can download it. You can enter your starting location and where your destination is. You can search for routes based on day and time. It will actually break it all the way down to tell you how long it's going to take you to walk from where you currently are to that bus stop, which bus you're going to get on, how long you're going to be on that bus for. When you get off of it, how long it's going to take you to walk from that bus stop to your destination. And it'll give you a total uh, transit time. That's your walking time, uh, how long you were on the bus from point A to point B. And it'll tell you what time they expect you to arrive at your destination. It's a great option for you to be able to plan out how to still be able to get to work uh, without having your own vehicle. So I can help you through that process if you need help with that. But ultimately, having your own transportation is the best option. All right, in summary, you become eligible for co-op as a junior. It's a privilege, not a right, and one that you must earn and maintain. Okay, Your co-op job must be related to your career area in almost every case. We have two main schedules that we follow. Again, our construction trades and automotive trades sometimes fall on a two-week about schedule, but the majority of our students are half-day co-op students. You must maintain your eligibility. You cannot begin working in co-op until all of your paperwork is completed, turned in, and approved by myself. 
You have signed a contract and you are receiving a grade for your co-op job. Every decision that you make in regards to your job must be approved by Mr. Boone and also by your career area teacher, or there can be consequences. What I'm referring to here is, again, you cannot quit your job without prior approval. Your job is the same thing as a class that you're taking. Okay, You can't quit a class without us approving it, and co-op is the same way. Okay. Make sure you represent Del Castle appropriately. And you know what that means. That means that strong work ethic, okay? Doing what is expected of you. Evaluations are due at the end of each marking period, and it is your responsibility to get them completed and returned to me before the due date. So this wraps up our summary on co-op. If you have any questions moving forward, please don't hesitate to stop by my office. I'm located in the main office. You can go to the main office and ask for Mr. Boone and co-op and they'll point you in the right direction. You can also reach me on Schoology at any time by sending a message to Mr. Boone. I look forward to working with all of you. Take care and stay safe.